10, simple. 9, Welcome back once again to the Simple 2000 series. Today, we are looking at the Ultimate series. All of them. All of the English released Ultimate series games. All 14 of them. In all fairness, considering this Ultimate series has got like 30 games to its name, to have 14 of the fucking games released in English is, 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 a, is a feat in itself. But then again, I guess you could say for the original Simple 2000 series, there's a lot of games released in English. But either way, let's dive right into the Simple 2000 Ultimate series. Let's go. So first up, we have Maxed Out Racing. Published by Midas and developed by D3 Publisher, it was released in Japan as Volume 3 of the Simple 2000 Ultimate series, Saisoku Zokusha King. And it's a, it's a racing game featuring cars with kind of, ups, ups, I guess, really absurd fucking like upgrades. Like, look at these exhausts. Uh, that's really going to help you help your racing right there, those exhausts. So yeah, so yeah, it's a racing game that focuses around, I believe this is a certain type of culture in Japan, where you do these kind of really stupid looking modifications to your cars. But they decided, okay, let's release this game in English. Why not? Right? So how does it play? It plays like fucking dog shit. It is literally one of the worst racing games I've ever played. You know, there are some Phoenix games, racing games, that play better than this. And that's really saying something. The, the turning is really, really fine. Like, you just slightly, slightly touch the analog stick and boom, you've got that. What you just saw right there was a slight touch of the analog stick. Boom. That's not good. So it's very, very sensitive on the turning. And you make one fucking mistake and boom, that's it, game over. As you can see, the, for some reason, I was doing okay when the race started. And then boom, the opponent was like, I'm going to activate turbo mode, which is not a thing, by the way. And uh, zoom on ahead of me. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very, very strange. Uh, the courses are very bland, as you can see. Uh, the, the racing controls are not good at all. Like, you, you drift, and when you drift, it does not feel good. It really doesn't. It is, overall, a pretty poor attempt at a racing game, if I be completely honest. Not a good racing game. At all. So, next up, we have Heartbeat Boxing, and this title screen should kind of give you an idea what to expect. Yep, it's this. Of course it's this. So, developed by Tamsoft and released in the West by uh, H-Tech, or Europe anyway, and it was known in Japan as Volume 6, Love Upper, as part of the Simple 2000 Ultimate series. Yeah, it's a boxing game featuring girls, basically, in, yeah, reasonable clothing, but there's a lot of clothing options for the girls, and, uh, yeah, and there's jiggle physics, because of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? Uh, as a boxing game, it's it's okay. It plays okay for a boxing game. I'll be, I will be honest. You know, you got your combos you can pull off, you got your, your jabs, your hooks. Yeah. I haven't really got much to say about the actual gameplay itself. It's fine. It's a fine boxing game. You know, you knock a person down three times and they're out. Technical KO. Yeah. I, <laughs> I haven't honestly got much else to say about it. It's, it's, it's just okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, that's... I know, it's not much to say, but yeah, it's just... It's somewhat scantily clad girls in, in in boxing in a ring. That's literally it. You ever wanted to play a game that was literally... The entire game was an escort mission? Yeah, neither would I. I wouldn't want to play that, but guess what we have right here? It is literally Escort Mission the game. Also known as Police Chase Down, developed by Tamsoft and released by H-Tech in Europe, and known as Volume 7, Saikyo Shiro Biking Security Police in Japan. Ah, uh, yeah, um, what have I got to say about this? It is literally Escort Mission the game, so you play as a member of the security police, you've got 
a limousine protect who has like I don't know the mayor, the president, who cares, right? It, I mean, literally, it is, can be any one of those. It will just give you a little brief before the mission starts, saying, "Oh yeah, you protect the president, protect the mayor, protect the con the police chief, whatever." And you're just a security police. They're in a limousine. They're driving along, and literally all you have to do is protect them from bad guys. You have the VIP HP. You don't have any HP, so feel free to do whatever the hell you like. And you got a gun to be able to take them down. The gun really doesn't do much. You're honestly the best bet you have is doing this. Just doing that, just ramming into the enemies. Ramming into the enemies does a fair amount of damage as long as you've got a good running start, as you can see here. It does a good fair amount of damage, and again, you don't have a health bar, so feel free to do it as much as you want. So the gun just basically is completely pointless. But yeah, it's literally escort mission the game, and um, for that, yeah, it's amusing to begin with, but then you realize, wow, I'm playing an escort mission over and over again, and it's the same mission every time, just a slightly different background. Yeah. It's not good. Next up, we have a sequel of a game I couldn't play on the Simple 1500 series, Maze Action. Developed by D3 Publisher, released by Age Tech in Europe, and known as Volume 8, Gekito Mero King in Japan. It's a game where you're running around a maze, pretty basic maze, like look at this, look, look at this maze, right? <laughs> not much going on here, right? And you uh, basically have got a to collect three keys. You got to get your own keys, I believe. Maybe, maybe you can get your opponent's keys. Who knows? But you basically got to get three keys and then go back to where you started from. Or you, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's it's definitely something. It's it's an interesting concept, is what it is. It's a very interesting concept. And yeah, there is a few graphical glitches, as you can see. The hands, for some reason, some have some characters have it worse than others. But yeah, you get weapons and you can use them against your enemies. The CPU is a little bit difficult, like he literally dodged all of my rocket blasts to him. So yeah, that's a thing. There's also traps. Uh, he managed to shoot me from that distance somehow. And that killed me. Again, you got health bar and you got to watch out for other traps and that. It's... like I said, in, in, in terms of concept, it's got a good concept. But the tank controls ruin it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, they just ruin it. And the CPU's difficulty is just crazy, in my eyes. He's just like, he dodges every attack you throw at him, it's just fucking retarded. Unless you get up close to him, and use melee attacks, it's just, yeah. So yeah, maze action, again, not very good in my eyes. Next up, we have Runabout 3 Neo Age, developed by Graphic Research, published by Interplay in the West or BAM Entertainment, because it would have been published by Interplay in America, but it was cancelled, BAM Entertainment in Europe, and released in Japan as Volume 9, Bakuso Manhattan Runabout 3. Or just simply Runabout 3 Neo Age, as it was originally released, it was re-released as a uh, Simple 2000 Ultimate Series game. I have no words to describe this game. No words to describe the enjoyment I get from this game. It is beautiful. Not only does the game look really nice in the emulator, like, I like the, 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 the textures and the, the shine of the car, very nice lighting for a PlayStation 2 game. This game is fucking pure chaos. Okay, you can't run people over, that's fine. But what you can do is bash into every other vehicle and object in the game, and that awards you kind of points, like you get a score of how much damage you, you, you've caused and it's brilliant because not only do you have like cars and shit that you can go around, I'm like I'm just going around just smashing into shit and blowing shit up. Guess what else you have? You have a fucking tank! You can literally go in a tank and just go around smashing into whatever the fuck you want, causing about as much damage as you want. And just destroying everything in your path. Your goal is literally to go from point A to point B, and how you get there and how many how many lives you take in the process does not matter. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Now the car controls are really nice. The tank controls could be improved upon, but it's a tank. What do you expect? I couldn't quite figure out how to shoot the cannon, unfortunately, uh, but I could shoot the machine gun. That's a pretty cool addition that you can just shoot the machine gun. But yeah. This game is so much fun, and has a pretty good soundtrack uh, to boot as well. Yeah, I just, I love this game. This is, 
this, I'm going to tell you right now, this is my favorite game of the collection. Favorite game out of the Simple 2000 Ultimate Series, all of the industry's games. It's just the physics of the cars, smashing into the cars, it's just so, so satisfying. So satisfying, and I so wish I had this game as a kid. I would have played the absolute fuck out of it. So, next up we have this strange entity of a game where you are playing golf in the streets. Literally, that's the game. Golf in the street. And I'll be honest, this intro is way too uh, out there for what is literally street golf. Uh, it's just crazy. And yeah, guess what the game is? Guess, guess, just guess. It's Street Golfer. That's the name of the game, developed by Polygon Magic and released in the in Europe by 505 Game Street. It was released in Japan as Street Golfer and then re-released as part of the Simple 2000 Ultimate series of Volume 12, Street Golfer. And is literally Street Golf. That is the that that is what it is. Um, hmm. The courses are all in the city, and yeah, you can play on concrete, on the road, path grass, whatever. It's, it, it's playing golf in the street. That's literally the whole entire premise of it. It's cool. I, I get that. You know, pretty cool premise. I will admit. Um, you even have, like, these obstacles, like, they put some fans here and that. Yeah. It's 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 not too bad. It's not too bad, I will admit. Uh, as a golf game, it's not too bad. The physics of the ball seem pretty, like, fair enough, you know. Uh, the only issue I have with the game is the power meter is very unspecific. Like, watch this here. Like, here we go. You ready for it? Ready? The power meter shows us, like, I guess, yard ratio, but it's just like, come on, can you just have a standard power meter that would make the game that much more enjoyable? You just, you've made something unnecessarily complicated. Maybe it's not supposed to be complicated, but for me, it's like, uh, am I, is that in the yards? Is that meters? What is that supposed to be? I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, street golfer. Not too bad, actually. Not too bad of a golf game. Um, I'll be honest. Next up, we have Motorbike King. Now, this is a real strange one. Developed by Tamsoft and published by 505 Game Street, and released in Japan as Volume 13, Kyoso Tansha King. Yeah, it's basically maxed out racing, but with bikes. That's basically what it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm not gonna do that. It's, it's, it's basically maxed out racing, but on bikes. For some reason, the footage kind of went all fucky here. I don't know why. I don't know why the footage went all fucky for this one. It's like, you know, no issue with any of the other games and the speed and whatnot. But yeah, for some reason, it was like really fucky with the recording here. But yeah, it, this, the same kind of shit controls you, that you'd expect from Maxed Out Racing is is back again. Don't get me wrong, the, the, the drifting is not as terrible. But still, again, it's a bike. You shouldn't be drifting in a bike to begin with. Uh, but yeah, it's still not great, and um, it's still not enjoyable. Enjoyable. The levels are once again really bland and boring, and yeah, it's just not good in the slightest. I did not enjoy uh, this game at all, Motorbike King. Also, the the cover of this game, literally in, in the West, by the way, yeah, makes no sense. Like what you see, the cover of this game has nothing to do with the, what this game is. This is basically the bike version of Maxed Out Racing. As you can see, the guy here has got as crazy add-ons on his bike. It's basically the bike variant of it. That's literally it. And yet, the cover of this game is just so... In in, in the West, by the way, in Europe, by 505 Game Street, it's just so fucking weird. But yeah, uh, don't play this game. Next up, we have Pink Pong. Developed by Hoonex and released in the West by 505 Game Street. Known in Japan as Volume 15, Love Ping Pong. It's, uh... Basically, like Heartbeat Boxing, it's basically scantily clad woman uh, playing ping pong, just like that was scantily clad woman doing boxing. <laughs> it's literally the same. So I've never played a kind of ping pong video game before. Now I I, I have played I think one as part of the Simple 1500 series, but it's not something that I would think translates well into a video game. And it just reminds me here, it's kind of like that. I don't think ping pong really fits that well as a video game. Um, yeah. For me, I kind of just cheesed playing this. Like, I found there was a certain angle where the opponent simply just could not retaliate against me. And as long as I got that angle, it was pretty much certain that the opponent would struggle like hell to, to hit that particular type of ball. 
But yeah, ping ping pong as a video game, I just think, just maybe just not for me, not for me. Yeah, so that's basically the game. The controls, I guess, for the ping pong are fine. I couldn't figure out how to do the, the super moves, but whatever. It's it's ping pong. If you like that kind of thing, fine. For me, it was just not very good. Next up, we have something interesting. It's a game I'm familiar with. A game that I found in a charity shop for real cheap. And probably, one, probably the only Simple 2000 Ultimate Series game I've actually played before doing this video. Deadly Strike. A game that isn't very deadly and doesn't strike very well. <laughs> That's nice to have that in the title. Developed by Cyworks Co. In, uh, Limited and published by Midas in, in Europe. Released in Japan as Volume 16, Sengoku vs. Gendai. Oh my god, this game is fucking dog shit. Like, this is going to be one of the worst beat-em-ups I've ever played in my whole entire existence. You know, I've played the Kung Fu. I've played the Kung Fu. And this plays worse than the Kung Fu. What the fuck is this? Who made this? Why did they think this was a real product? <laughs> it's, got, it's really, really bad. Basically, you're in this, like, still image world going up and basically do, using the same combo on the same enemies over and over again. And it just... It, it controls horribly. Like, like, the Kung Fu was bad. And probably the Kung Fu, in all fairness, you could say it's worse. But that's debatable. That's fucking debatable. At least that one had style to it. And it's quite funny. This one, it just, like, shows you this intro cinematic, and you think, oh, this looks really cool. And then you play the game and it's just like, at least with the Kung Fu one, you had no expectations walking in. No expectations. You were like, oh look, it's Jackie Chan. <laughs> oh look, it's Jackie Chan. <laughs> with this, you watch the intro and think, oh, this looks fucking awesome. And then you play the game and it plays like fucking dog shit. <laughs> plays like, like, if, Tem if, if Temko Ko in Omega Force, like, literally had decided to eat Mexican. And had really bad diarrhea, and this is the result. <laughs> they shit out this fucking atrocity. Deary me. And you thought Dynasty Warriors 9 was that atrocity. No, no, no. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I, I joke and I kid, but god damn it, this has got to be one of the worst 3D beat em ups around. God. I remember buying this, right? It was like a dollar, if you want to exchange it into American currency. It's just, it was like a dollar. And I brought it back and I played it and I was like, wow, this is dog shit and that's it. I played it for all of probably about five minutes. I played it longer this time around and goddammit, it was a fucking waste of time. <laughs> Why you gotta do me like this, D3? Why you gotta do me like this? Oh my god. Why you gotta do me like this, D3? Seriously, I, you know, come on, D3. Come the fuck on. So here's Riho Futaba dancing. You know, because that's not out of context or anything. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention Riho, Riho Futaba has been making cameo appearances in some of the other games like Heartbeat Boxing and Ping Pong. I forgot to mention that she was in those games. But this is basically a, a dancing a DDR kind of style game, which does not play well. With Riho Futaba in it, with like, oh yeah, that's that's the jiggle physics. This have a very def definitive ass, as you can see there. Hmm, that's how I have all of that. So yeah, this was developed by Tamsoft, uh, published by Five or Five Game Street in the West. I don't know how the fuck this got published as a, as a three plus in the West. And was released in Japan as Volume 18, Love Aerobi. Yeah, I have nothing to say on this. The 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 controls for the button prompts are fucking terrible. They're not good. In no Yakuza Zero uh, level of bottom prompts here. And yeah, it's basically watching Riho Futaba dance. That's basically what it is. Fucking terrible. Fucking disgusting. I didn't think it was possible to have even worse looking title screen. Look at the character models here. Holy Jesus. So this is Street Boys. Developed by Tamsoft and released by 505 Game Street in Europe. And known as Volume 21, Kenka Johto Yankee Bancho in Japan. I've got nothing to say about this game. Literally nothing. I'm not even joking. I have literally nothing to say about this game. It, it has some kind of story somewhere along the lines. And, uh, yeah, it's a beat-em-up that plays terribly. Like, really bad. Like, 
I mean, like, seriously bad. What is up with Tamsoft making these games and making really, really bad beat-em-ups? Like, you made Onichibara. Maybe, I don't know, was this before Onichibara? Onichibara's pretty good. Pretty decent. You know? But why is this, like, just complete dog shit? I mean, like, God, look how drab the fucking backgrounds are. I got lost, by the way, as well in this game. Like, I was in this area and I was like, okay, am I supposed to defeat all the enemies? I've defeated all the enemies. And I kept going through, like, doors and going around in circles and I was like, up. I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing? So yeah, this game is, um, is terrible. It's fucking terrible. I, I did not like this game at all. This is... So, I'm not gonna spend much time talking about this game because I don't think it deserves the fucking time of day. So, this is Project Minerva Professional. It was developed by a developer called Flatout and was released in Europe by Midas. It was released in Japan as Project Minerva Professional, but also got a re-release as part of the Simple 2000 Ultimate series as Volume 23, Project Minerva Professional. And yeah, the first vibe I have is it's trying to be Metal Gear Solid. Problem is, it plays like fucking dog shit. Yeah, it's really bad. So, the graphics in this game don't look too bad. You know, I like the grass kind of thing going on here. So, it gives you a tutorial, and then you get shoved into a mission where you're supposed to shoot drones. The shooting controls are not good. They really are not good. And, um... Yeah! It, you got this, like, squad you're looking after as well. It seems like this game is just trying to do too much. This game is really trying to do too much. It also seems to have this story... Yeah, it's... Uh, I, don't, I can't recommend this. I'm not a fan of Metal Gear Solid to begin with. And... Yeah, I have... I've got no words to, to describe the, how it was to play this. It's like... I, go ahead and play it yourself. Go ahead and play, play it yourself. It is a strange fucking experience. But yeah, um, for, for me, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. So, next up we have Mashed Fully Loaded, and I'll be completely honest, I was caught by surprise for this game. It, when I f initially started playing it, I thought, wow, this is not good, but then it, j it just grew on me and grew on me, and I started to actually enjoy myself. I felt like the, the perspective and the controls, it just kind of reminded me of Micro Machines, but yeah, after, after a while I actually started to actually really enjoy playing this game. So. This game was developed by Supersonic Software and was published by, I believe, Explosive, or it says Empire Interactive for both America and Europe, but it says Explosive on the uh, on the cover for the European version, so who knows. It was released in America as Drive to Survive and in Japan as Volume 28 Boso Kenka Grand Prix Gr Drive to Survive. Yeah, the game came out in Europe before Japan as well. It's one of those uh, Pink Panther kind of things, you know what I mean? So, how does it play? Pretty well, you know. To, to start off with, it kind of feels a bit sluggish, the controls, but you get used to them pretty quickly. Especially in the snow, it's like you're, you're sliding all over the place. But basically, the goal of the game is you've got to get far enough ahead uh, from your opponent like there, you see he got ahead of me. You gotta get a certain distance between you and your opponent. Obviously you gotta be ahead of your opponent when you do this, and they'll get eliminated. And that's basically what this game is. It's just, it's just making sure that you get ahead of it. The courses, that you know, as you can see, the track is very small, but it works in its favor, if I be completely honest. It's a lot of fun once you get to get, get a hang of the controls and whatnot. Yeah, mashed fully loaded. Definitely worth having a, have a, having a go on as a racing game, definitely. So some idiot somewhere decided it was a good idea to release a sequel in the in Europe of the original game. Maxed Out Racing as Maxed Out Racing Nitro, developed by D3 Publisher, published by Essential Games in Europe, and released as Volume 30, Zorin Zokusha God in Japan. So yeah, so the original game got a sequel in Japan, and they decided it was a good idea to release the sequel in Europe as well. See, look, you can make your car look retarded. Isn't that great? <laughs> so, what's the difference between this game and the previous game, right? Obviously, we were going to skip the motorbike one, as it was motorbikes. Um, you, you, the drifting is fixed. That's one thing. The turning is fixed. That's another. You know, at least they fixed stuff. So they fixed the turning, they fixed the drifting. 
and the controls actually feel pretty good in this game, if I be honest. What's what's what? what is so so you like this game, Bio? No, because the levels are still bland and it's still boring. Uh, the music is not great. Like, pfft, it really isn't. Like, the fucking music in Runabout 3 is much better than this. Like, 100% better than this. It's, yeah, it's kind of bland. I just feel like it's really bland. A really bland racing game. Fucking the taxi mode from Yakuza 5 is more character than this game. Fuck me. It's just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so Max Don't Racing Nitro. Again, don't play it. It's better than the original, but it still don't play it. Uh, finally we're done with the Simple 2000 Ultimate Series. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I did have quite a bit of enjoyment playing these games, but also I had quite a lot of not didn't have enjoyment playing these games, if you know what I mean. The best game of this series is 100% Runabout 3 Neo H, that's definitely the best one. But yeah, it definitely this, uh, this, like, lineup of games had its ups and downs. 100%. Uh, don't get me wrong, though, I did enjoy myself. So, you think the Simple 2000 series is done? No, we still got we still got more coming. So, that's literally all that that it, that is not literally that is all of the English released Simple 2000 Ultimate Series games. But I wouldn't mind looking at some of the Japanese games. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not looking at every single one of them. I'm not planning to do that, and I don't have no interest in doing that. And it's not because, and don't think that not in, no interest is. Because, oh, you know, Bio, you, you went through the entire Simple 1500 series, right? Why didn't you do it for this? It's, it's, I can't find all the games. I can't find all the games. If I could find all the games, I probably would have done it. But because I can't find all the games, I can't do it. So, I'm going to be looking at probably five of the five games from the Japanese exclusive side of the Simple 2000 Ultimate series. And then after that, we got one more Simple 2000 video to do, and then we're done with the Simple 2000 series. But yeah, anyway, I've been Bio, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.